Hello there. Welcome to the virtual Sunday School of the Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. On this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, I am Kendall Mark Kendall in Grand Turk in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Our diocese stretches from Bimini in the northwest to Salt Key in the southeast. And I have responsibility as director of this parish in Grand Turk as well as for St. John's Church in Salt Key. This church, St. Mary's, is referred to as a pro cathedral, and I'll tell you why. In every diocese, there is a cathedral. In our diocese, the cathedral is in Nassau, and its name is Christ Church. A church is designated a cathedral because it contains the official seat or throne and the word in Latin is cathedra. And so cathedra gets its name from cathedra. In Christchurch Cathedral, there is a very elaborate seat which is set aside for the bishop as his official throne, as it were. Now, when the bishop comes to the Turks and Caicos Islands, this church, St. Mary's, the pro cathedral, acts as a cathedral for the Turks and Caicos. Now, we don't have the official cathedral here, but we have a substitute seat, which is set aside for the bishop whenever he comes in. But I want to tell you a secret. Are you going to keep this secret? Don't tell anyone. Sometimes, when it's quiet around here, and nobody's in the church, I come quietly into the church, and I go to the bishop's cathedral or seat. And even though it's set aside for him, I sit down in it. And I sit for a few minutes, and I feel as if I'm the bishop. Well, perhaps it's a good thing I can sit down in the bishop's seat. But what is more important is not so much sitting down in the bishop's seat, but walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And that is what the lesson is for today. When you read the gospel, you will see that Jesus says, if you love me, you must follow my commandments. And so all of us, not only you children, but us as adults, we have a responsibility to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, following his commandment. On Thursday, we will celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, which is a commemoration of Jesus going up into heaven. And I want to say to you that if you follow the footsteps of Jesus, that you are assured of going also to be with him in heaven. And so I want you to pay close attention to the passage for today and the lesson that you are going to be taught. For Jesus requires us to follow his commandments so that we can be with you in heaven. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to broadcast our Sunday school virtually. We thank you for the knowledge and skill of the technician, for those persons who devise this plan, for the teachers who are involved, for the parents who give support and for the churches, but most importantly for the children who should benefit the most from this Sunday school. Pray that they will be faithful to the lesson which they are going to be taught. Bless us in these two countries, the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, especially as we go through the global pandemic. 
But we know we have confidence in you. We know that you will keep us there. And so we depend upon you. Bless us this day, dear Lord. This day, now, and forevermore. Amen. Have a good Sunday school. The role of a canon in the Anglican Church. A canon is a title given by the bishop to a priest of long and credible standing. Canons perform special duties assigned by the bishop. They have special seats reserved for them in the cathedral church. There, there are seven active canons in the Diocese of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands. They are the Reverend Canon Atma Budu, the Reverend Canon Sebastian Campbell, the Reverend Canon Mark Kendall, the Reverend Canon Basil Tynes, the Reverend Canon Norman Lightborn, the Reverend Canon Peter Scott, and the Reverend Canon Crossley Joaquin.
gospel lesson is taken from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you often. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me, because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. All right, so well, let's go through this gospel. Let's break it down. Let's dissect it. Let's put it into everyday language so we can understand it, right? To verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. What does that mean to you? Okay, I can do it. All right, Jason, um, go ahead. In this verse, Jesus is saying that if we love him, mm -hmm. and our love to him is dwelling Christ. Also, okay. For us to keep his commandments, we must obey him. We are also commanded to love one another in exactly the way Christ loves us. Awesome. A scripture which refers to this loving one another is Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Do unto, and it's also known as the golden rule. Do unto mm -hmm. us as you have them, do unto you. And this is what this, this verse means to me. Awesome. Thank you, Janelle. Number 16. And I will ask the Father. So Jesus is saying he's going to ask God who's in heaven. And he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Now, remember, Jesus is saying this because he's preparing them to experience a life where he's not going to be there physically anymore. So he's foreshadowing his death and what's going to come afterwards. And then Jesus told them, I am promising you that even though you may not see me physically anymore, I'm going to send you help. And that help is going to be in the form of who? People. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now remember, which season are we in now? Easter. We're in Easter. And y'all said just earlier, yes. what season are we going into? Thank you. And what's the significance, of, the significance of Pentecost? Um, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Hey, so you see this all this timeline making sense? That's yeah. Right. Awesome. Okay, verse 17. Let's jump straight into it. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Jesus was physical and spirit, right? He was divine, but that was a physical. Now he's leaving the physical and he's sending something that you can't see. So that's why in the same verse, it says, because it neither sees him nor knows him. The Holy Spirit was a new thing. Okay. So no one really knew about it until after Jesus explained it to them. Well, you already know him. You may not be familiar with the form, but you already know who it is. All right. And he abides with you. Because Jesus is, Jesus is still physically talking to them. So the physical is there. But remember, Jesus represents one third of the, of the Trinity. Of the Trinity. But he's still one third and all in three. Isn't that awesome? That's the whole mystery of it. And he says he will abide with you and he will be in you. Because remember what happened at Pentecost. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. It making sense now? Is this making sense? Yes, ma'am. Awesome, awesome. Let's move to verse 18. I will not leave you often. I am coming to you. Who can explain what that means? Okay, I will. It All right, kind of. Often mean like a child getting leave. They don't have no parents and anything. So basically, mm -hmm. he's trying to say he won't leave your side, that he will come to you. He will, he will have your back no matter what. 
Awesome, awesome. He's not gonna just leave you high and dry. He's he's letting he's letting the disciples know from now. Hey, I may not be here physically, but I'm sending someone to be with you to help you to guide you along this journey. I am not gonna leave you. Awesome. Thank you, Shekinah. Verse nineteen. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. I look a minute. Go ahead, Gian. Basically, basically, it's in reference to Jesus, him being crucified so the world won't see him. Mm-hmm. But because he rose again, you get to see him because he lives in you. Awesome. Jesus also promised that he is coming back for us. And if we live the life we're required, he's like, he requires from us, mm-hmm. we are guaranteed a spot in heaven. So, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, basically. The verse 20. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Who wants to break that down for us? I will break it down. Go ahead, Alex. That could possibly mean that the the Spirit of the of the Father is in you. The Mm -hmm. Spirit of you is in the Father. You are in you are in someone else's spirit. Someone else's spirit is in you. Okay. We all have a little bit of each other in us. Awesome. Awesome. That is so true. And like we said earlier with the Trinity, three parts, but all in one. When we accept Christ, when we accept Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior, he sends us help to help us on the journey. And that help is in the form of the Holy Spirit, as the scripture is telling us. So we always would have a part of the divine with us, dwelling within us. All right. The last verse, verse 21. Who wants to knock that out? Um, I could do it. All right, Matthew. All right. Go ahead. Okay, um, for the first part of the verse, um, it explains um says um something about the commandments and how if we do keep them, that Jesus loves us. If, although He still loves us, that He show an unconditional love to us mm. if we follow commandments. Um, for the second part of it, I get like a mutual as as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all together as one. It's almost a mutual love for everything that has been created, especially us as we are God's chosen people. And so awesome. it shows that all of them, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have one goal and one mind working together to benefit us. Awesome. Awesome. Very good, Matthew. Love that explanation. So does everyone have a gist or a better understanding from start to finish of what this gospel is saying to us? God will love us no matter what. Shagani, you were saying something? Yeah, God will love us no matter what. Yes, he will. He will. And as long as we do what? Um, Stay by his commandments. And keep his commandments, right? Yeah. That's the main thing. Because if we love him like we say we do, we will keep his commandments. We will do what he says to do, right? Yes, we will love our neighbors as ourselves, like the Chanel was saying. We will do unto others as we would have them do unto us. All right? So that's, that's some tool to put the thought. All right. Awesome job, guys. Hello. My name is Riley Simonette, and I attend St. Agnes Anglican Church. In the reading of Promises of the Holy Spirit, John 14, verse 21 says, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. In this drawing that I did, we see where a boy praying by his bed after reading his Bible is not only honoring God through daily prayer, but inviting him into his life and heart as well. On the hill outside, you will notice that there is a shepherd and sheep. The shepherd represents Jesus and how he is always present and everywhere, watching over us and caring for us as his sheep. I hope this drawing is a simple reminder of how easy it is to let God into our lives daily. Thank you. My name is Balaje from St. Agnes Parish. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. How do I know Jesus loves me? He gave his life. What more could he give? 
Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Hello, my name is Milo Simonette and I attend St. Agnes Anglican Church. Today, I will be answering the question, what did Jesus send for his followers? Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit for his followers. The Holy Spirit would stay with them because Jesus was leaving and did not want them to be lonely. The Holy Spirit would stay to help in any way, to comfort and guide them. Thank you. My name is Raziel Roll. I am six years old and I go to Walsing's Church. The lesson for today is I will be doing a project on how I love Jesus. John 14 and 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yeah, I have already did put on number one. Now I'm going to do the rest. Raziel is constructing a display that shows that he loves the Lord Jesus and he loves God and therefore that he will keep his commandments. So the display is made out of construction paper. First Raziel used the paper to cut out his cut out his hands so you will see two hands next he used a different color paper to cut out a diagram that would imitate the plaques or that the Ten Commandments were on when Moses brought them down to his people the Israelites then he took the plaques he made two plaques one larger one smaller a black one and a green one he placed the green one on the top which was the smaller one so that you can see the edges of the larger one at the bottom then Raziel took each commandment and he placed each commandment on each one of the blocks so he started with the first commandment and he put that commandment on the first finger of his ten fingers. And on each finger, Raziel placed a different commandment, showing ten commandments on ten fingers. What Raziel is trying to display is Raziel is trying to show that he will use his hands to help him keep God's commandments cause, because he loves God. Raziel also placed the Bible verse on the collage. And you will see at the bottom, John 14, verse 15. There are many other ways in which you can portray the same love. You can use a heart and make it a diagram to show love. And you can place each commandment all around the heart. In this particular activity Rosie chose to use his hands. All you need is construction paper, scissors, and glue. This is how I love Jesus. And this is how I love God. Today's lesson teaches us about a gift that we received many, many years ago following Jesus' death and resurrection. John chapter 14, verse 16 through 17 states, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you 
and will be in you. Here to describe the special gift for us a little further is Noah Bodhi from the Self-Control Saints class of Holy Cross Sunday School. Let's read Cap. Have you ever felt the wind and wondered where it came from? We can't see the wind, but we can surely see what it's doing, can't we? This reminds me of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised us a helper, and that helper is the Holy Spirit. We don't see it because it lives inside of those of us who make Jesus our Lord and Savior. Even though we can't see it, we know it's there. It brings us comfort and help when we are in need. The wind now has a new meaning, doesn't it? Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'm trusting in you. Teach us how to love each other and how to serve you better. Thank you for providing the Holy Spirit who teaches us that we need faith in you to be very successful in life. Thank you for providing all that you have provided for us and help us to be grateful for all that we have. May we believe in you so we will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen.